This program is produced by the volunteers of Teleco Village Broadcasting. Welcome to Handmade, a series about artisans and craftsmen who use their creativity and skills to make one-of-a-kind art pieces. In our modern society, when everything is mass-produced, pre-packaged, and available on Amazon, it's easy to forget that some things are still made by hand. In this series, we'll be visiting the studios and workshops of woodworkers, weavers, stained glass makers, metal workers, quilters, and many more. Not only will you see these artisans at work, but you'll hear about their creative process and learn how they acquired the skills needed to make their unique pieces of art. So come on, let's visit the studio and workshop of today's featured artist. In today's episode, we're visiting the studio of Tina Brunetti, a painter with a special twist. Most of us are familiar with painters who work with oils, acrylics, or watercolors on canvas, but Tina paints on metal with alcohol ink. And she's going to show us how she turns this into this. Thank you for inviting us into your studio today. I'm very excited about learning your process and, uh, and, and the creativity behind it. Uh, were you always interested in art? Yes, ever since I was a little girl. I was raised a Catholic and uh, we went to church every Sunday and um, because of my hearing impairment I did not really get much out of a sermon and plus the priest did speak in Latin, mm -hmm. right. and so that was a double whammy yeah. for me. I did enjoy going to Sunday school because we always had a coloring book. Uh -huh. And the coloring book was mainly about the life of Jesus. And so I just colored and colored and colored. And from there, I did more artwork at home. My mom would buy um, cartoon books on how to uh, draw cartoons. And, and I would just hook. I always either color or would draw. Yeah. Practice, practice, practice. Mm -hmm. Yes, definitely. Um, before the show, we were talking a little bit about uh, you, the fact that you took some class, art classes in, in high school and college and then later on as an adult. And like a lot of painters, you started out working in oils and acrylics and water uh, colors on canvas or paper. Uh, but how'd you get interested in alcohol ink? I noticed there were two other women who were painting an alcohol ink on large UPO paper, and that is a, a, like a plastic paper, but big paper, and beautiful flowers, and I was amazed. I'm like, oh my gosh, I have to try that. And so I asked my instructor, can I learn how to paint uh, alcohol ink? He said, sure. Have you ever used alcohol ink? I said, just on little tiles. and. And he said, and you want to paint an animal? I said, well, yeah, because that's what I paint. So anyway, so I, I drew it out on a piece of paper, brought it back to the next class, and started painting with alcohol ink. Your wolf. Yep, yep. That's my wolf. Pretty good for the first effort on alcohol <laughs> ink. <laughs> so he's mine now. We'll see uh, later on in the show that two of your favorite subjects are animals and Native Americans. Mm -hmm. uh, what inspires you about those subjects? Like many people, I just have an intense passion for uh, wildlife and uh, domestic animals, especially now with uh, the endangered animals. And I just feel like if I'm painting them, uh, I can make people more aware we need them. We need to keep them alive. We can't just keep killing them off. Right. You know, and so that makes me feel good when I paint, paint them. And as for Native Americans, 
I have always felt a connection to just um, in general, you know, different Native American uh, history, the history of Native American, and I've always had an extreme interest. And I actually um, drew many pencil drawings of uh, their beautiful faces. The start of the process, obviously, is selecting the, the kind of metal that you use. Mm -hmm. uh, can you show us some different kinds that you have here? Yes, this is copper, brass, aluminum, steel, bronze, titanium. Okay, so this piece is brass, and this is what it looked like um, before I actually prepared it. And you can tell it's it, very dull, yeah, it's oxidized. Right, very dull. And so what I wanted to create was a pattern as well in the background. First of all, I shine it up with a grinder, just back and forth. Then I went back and added these definite lines again to create the sun rays. And it, uh, it creates an incredible <laughs> background for my giraffe. And um, I don't have to paint it. Oh, you, know, you don't have you know, to paint the background, right, you can just I, leave it bare. Okay. Yeah, I just leave it bare. And uh, the, the really interesting thing about this, it creates a 3D effect as well. So, that's why I love metal. <laughs> In addition to grinding, you can also treat the metal by flame working or adding a patina. This is a different kind of patina, correct? Yes. Actually, I did use ammonia and, ammonia and salt and vinegar. And it did create a really nice brown, uh, natural uh, background for this uh, uh, amber leopard. I'm sure like a lot of artists, you start with, you know, thumbnail sketches mm -hmm. of your, your pieces. Uh, tell us a little bit about how you uh, came up with the idea behind these, these three horses. So anyhow, the first step I do is actually um, sketch it. I know this is small, but I, I actually made a small sketch of what I wanted on this large piece because I'm, I also need a projector, okay? And I, I cut out to the size I want. You know, get the shape up and then start painting. And I'm sure it also helps you with the proportions. And yes. And you were talking before about how important your eyes are and making sure the eyes are, are positioned correctly on the animal's face. Right, and I, don't, I didn't want them all to have the same shape, too. When you first start a brand new project, uh, do you see the, the, the finished piece, or do you just sort of follow your inspiration? I started the whole thing. I started three large horses and the five small ones going across. I call these ghost horses, you know, because you want to see them, but you don't. It's kind of a back and forth. You showed us how you prepare the surface yes. of the metal, and this one's already been done with a grinder and some light sanding. Mm -hmm. But now I want to see how you actually apply the alcohol ink because I would imagine it's very hard to do. So this is where the magic begins. Oh.
And again, I use a Dremel tool to bring out the detail. You're just not the kind of artist that does craft fairs. Uh, you do juried art shows. Depending on the show, you can have so many applicants and only a few are selected. At one show, for example, it might be 1,500 or 2,000 applicants, but they only choose 150. The odds are really against you. How do you use social media to sell your works or just to tell, let people know who you are? Yes, Facebook. <laughs> Facebook is a, is a big help. I have showed quite a few paintings through there, and I also have a website, it's Tina Brunetti Art, um, but main, mainly through Facebook. I also have uh, Instagram as well. How is your personality reflected in your work? <laughs> well, um, um, bright colors, you know. Um, I'm a happy person. Bright colors are happy, and I, I, I can't stop. It's a passion of mine, you know. I love animals, so when I paint my animals, um, my passion, my personality, it just, um, uh, my, my love for animals just shows up. Right. And, and one of the things that's very important to me is that I capture the eyes, because if I don't capture the eyes, then there's no point in it for me. Right. And so I have to paint the eyes first. I've heard that from a lot of artists, mm -hmm. that if you, if you don't get the eyes right, yeah. it, it, paintings it, just don't work. It doesn't. It's just flat. Uh, like a lot of working artists, um, I'm sure you encounter creative blocks every once in a while. How do you overcome that? Well, jokingly, but I do just so. Uh, I do have a drum set over here, and if I'm just not having a very creative day, and want to beat it out, I, I do it on my drum. And I get pretty loud, especially when I have a garage door open. I'm sure my neighbors can hear me. But it feels really good. Right. You beat it out and take a deep breath and walk back, sit down and look at your painting and say, okay, now I can do this. Right. You know, of course, I do like to listen to music sure. and that kind of helped me get in the mood and I burned some incense and, okay. and I stayed the whole place. Right. Get to keep away the evil spirits. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for inviting us into your studio today. You're a very talented artist. Well, thank you. And your work is outstanding. Well, thank you so much. I really enjoyed it. Thank you. Now that you've seen a metal painter at work, I hope you have a greater appreciation of the time and skill that it takes to make something by hand. It takes passion, practice, and time. I hope you enjoyed our profile of a local artist. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again next time on Handmade.